Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve meeting rooms two, And just like meeting rooms one, we're going to solve this problem on the website called Lint Code because this is a premium leak code problem. So if you want to be able to solve it for free, you can use lintcode.com. So it's pretty similar to meeting rooms one. We are given a list of meeting times. Each meeting time is an object and it has two variables. It has a start time and it has an end time. And the end time is always going to come after the start time. That's pretty intuitive and we want to know what's the minimum number of conference rooms required for all of these meetings now what they what they actually mean by conference rooms is basically what is the maximum number of overlapping meetings at any given point in time so for example in this input we have a meeting that starts at zero ends at 30 another meeting that starts at five ends at 10 and then another meeting that starts at 15 and ends at 20. And we would need two meeting rooms for this problem because we are going to have two overlapping meetings. So if we had one room where the 0 to 30 meeting is going on, the 5 to 10 meeting is basically going to be going on during the same time as this one. So we're going to need a second meeting room for this. And we also have another meeting, 15 to 20. Now it doesn't overlap with this one. So technically they can be a part of the same meeting room. Now we don't actually need to determine what goes in each meeting room. We just have to know what's the maximum number of overlapping meetings at any given point in time. In this case, that happens to be two. We are going to be required to sort the input array which is going to take n log n time complexity. So this is going to be the time complexity of the algorithm. The memory complexity is going to be big O of n. I'm going to show you how to do the solution. Now, if you just stare at this, like the problem statement, and just look at these numbers, it's going to be difficult to come up with how to code the solution. But as you guys know, I like to draw pictures. And when you look at the picture, it actually becomes pretty easy to figure out how to solve this problem. So let's do that. So this is kind of how we can visualize those meetings, right? These are the exact same meetings that we were given in that first example. We have one meeting going from zero to 30, another meeting going from five to 10, and another meeting going from 15 to 20. Now, if we just go from left to right, we're gonna see, okay, well, this is the first meeting that starts, right? It starts at time zero. And if we just keep going, now we see what's the next point on our grid right well there's another meeting and this is not an end time this is not you know the, the first meeting isn't ending there just happens to be another meeting that's starting so another meeting just started at time five so what does that tell us that tells us two meetings have started so far but nothing has ended right there's no meeting that's ended yet so at this point in time we're gonna have two meetings going on at the same amount of time so what we're going to be maintaining is a variable count, which tells us at any given point in time, what is the number of meetings going on? And right now our count is two, and we're going to end up returning whatever the max value this happened to be. So what's the next point on our grid? We visited this one. We visited this one. Now we're looking at this one, right? Okay. At at time 10, there's an end point. This is not a starting value. This is a starting value. This is an ending value. So what does that tell us? That tells us a meeting has just ended ended so what are we going to do with our count we knew we had two meetings going on at the same time over here but now after this point we're only going to have one meeting going on right like look at the picture there's only one meeting going on and it's this first one right zero to thirty so we're going to set the number of meetings going on to one now we're going to look at the next point in order now it happens to be a start time so another meeting just started at time 15 right so once again there are two meetings going on right at this point there's two meetings going on the first one and this second one so once again a meeting started that's going to tell us to increment our count so now we're going to say two meetings are once again going on and again we're going to repeat the same process the next point is at 20 this happens to be an end time so that means a meeting is ending right we don't we don't technically even know is it this meeting that's ending or is it this meeting that's ending it doesn't really matter to us all we know is that after this point only one meeting is going to be going on at any particular time and it's going to be this one so we're going to take our count of meetings going on decrement it and now it's going to be one and last but not least we're going to go to the last point in our grid and it's also a end time obviously the last point is always going to be a end time for a meeting so that means another meeting is stopping after that point there's only going to be you know zero meetings going on so therefore we can take our count decrement it all the way down to zero 
Now we notice that what was the max value that count happened to be? Well, the max it ever reached was two. So therefore we're gonna return two as our result. Two meeting rooms is enough to contain all of these meetings. So let me show you quickly how we're actually gonna be sorting these points and how we're gonna be able to iterate through each point in order, regardless of if it's a start time for a meeting or if it's an end time for a meeting. So I'm gonna slightly change the example in this case. So just by looking at the picture, what do you think the meeting rooms number would be for this problem? Well, you see over here, there's gonna be one meeting going on. Here, there's gonna be two meetings. Here, there's gonna be two meetings. Here, there's gonna be one meeting. But look at this point at point time equals 10. Clearly, there's three meetings going on at this time, or at least three meetings have a 10 value included in their time interval. Does that mean that there's going to be three meetings going on? Well, technically, the way this problem is defined, this meeting would end before this meeting started. What I'm saying is these two meetings are non-overlapping. So when we are going through this point, if we ever have a tie, meaning if we ever have two points with the exact same value, what we're going to do is we're always going to iterate through the end meeting time before we iterate through the start meeting time, right? Notice how this is a end time, this is a start time. We're always gonna pick this one if we ever get a tie like this. So we're actually gonna have two input arrays. We're not just gonna sort every meeting based on the start time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all start times in a separate array. So zero, five, and 10 are all gonna go in a separate array. These are all the start times for any meeting, right? This way, we have them in sorted order and we know, okay, these are the ones that are start times. We can differentiate between a start time and an end time. We're also going to put every end time in an array as well in sorted order. So we can see the first is 10, next 15, next 30. So now we're going to start this problem off with two pointers. We're going to have one pointer at the beginning of start and one pointer at the beginning of end. We're always between these two, we're always going to pick the minimum value. So we are going to maintain a count, which tells us the number of meetings that are going on. And if the minimum between these two is the start time, what we're going to do is we're going to increment the count of meetings going on and then shift our start pointer to the next one. And we can see that that's the case again, right? Five is less than 10. Therefore, a meeting has to start before this meeting ends. So once again, we're going to shift our pointer over here and we're going to increment our count by one. So the count is now going to be set to two. And now we get to the edge case, right? We got a tie. So a meeting is ending and a meeting is starting. Remember, we are going to visit the end time if there's a tie first. So what we're going to say now is that, okay, a meeting has to end before this meeting starts. So we're going to shift our end pointer to the next one. If we iterate through an end value, that means a meeting just ended. Therefore, we're going to decrement our count by one. So two is decremented by one. It's going to be set to one now. Now, again, we're going to compare these two values, 10 and 15. Which one is smaller? The 10, right? So therefore, another meeting is starting. So we're going to increment our count by one. So count is now going to be equal to two. And now we don't even have any start times left. So technically at this point, we're just going to be iterating through the end time. So we're literally just going to be decrementing this. So we iterate through this, decrement this down to one, iterate through this, decrement this down to zero. So technically, once we've gotten through all start times, we don't even have to iterate through the remaining portion of end times. So what we can say is that our max count at any given point it reached was two, so therefore we're gonna return two. So that is basically the algorithm we're gonna use and coding it up isn't gonna to be too difficult. Yes, we are gonna to have to create two separate arrays, start and end, and we're gonna to have to sort these input arrays. So the time complexity is gonna be n log n, the memory complexity is gonna be big O of n. That being said, let's jump into the code now on lint code. So like I said, we are gonna create a array for all start times in sorted order. Now I'm sure you know how to do that in your language of choice but in Python, there's a pretty easy way to do it. So we're gonna go through for every interval in the list of intervals that we're given. Now, an interval is an object as defined up above. It has two member variables, start and end. So since this array is start, we're gonna put every start time of this interval in this input array. And don't forget, we are gonna sort it. So, and I can do that on the same line, just like this. We're gonna have a similar array for end times, basically doing the exact same thing. So a sorted input array, of i dot end for every interval in the list of intervals. Now we are gonna have a result variable and a count variable. So count is just gonna be whatever, what I basically said it was gonna be. Result is just gonna continuously be whatever the max we have reached so far for the count variable. And we are also gonna have two pointers. I'm just gonna name them S and E. Uh, they're initially gonna be 
both zero. So S is gonna be the position we're at in our start array. E is gonna be the position we're at in our end array. And I'm basically just gonna keep going while S has not reached the end of intervals. Because we know, of course, S is gonna reach the end before E does because the start times are always before the end times. So remember we have two cases. If the start, if the position that we're at in our start array is less than the position we're at in our end array, and the other case would be if the end array was greater than the S or than the start array, which would be the else case. But also if these were equal, we're also gonna do the else case because if they're equal, then we wanna make sure we increment our E pointer first. So that's exactly what we would do here. We would take E, increment it, increment it by one, and to our count, decrement it by one. The opposite is gonna be true up here. So here, since S is smaller, since the start time is smaller, we're gonna be shifting our S pointer and we're gonna be incrementing the count. So we do have one additional meeting going on right now. That's what we're saying. And after every iteration, basically, we're gonna update our result potentially. We always want it to be the maximum that we've reached so far for count. So we're gonna just take the max of result and count. Once that is done, that means this loop, once this loop is done, that means we've finished all of our start times. So at that point, we can basically return our result because we've ensured that it has reached whatever the maximum it was gonna be. And with all that, we can go ahead and submit it. Hopefully this works. And as you can see, it does. It's about as efficient as it, as it would get. So this is the entire code. It's not too bad. Once you can kind of visualize what is actually going on, that's how you can kind of figure out how to put the different points inside of separate input arrays. But I think it would be pretty difficult to come up with this on your own in like a very short interview. But I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports our channel a lot. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.